First of all, welcome everybody to the Up to Up Sports eighth annual and first ever virtual gala. Today, we're gonna to be discussing some very important coaches and people with Up to Us Sports, Janicia and Leo. And I have to say, first of all, I, I wanna get right to it because I'm a former coach so and a player, so I wanna get right to it. Hold up those awards right now. I wanna see them. I wanna see these awards. That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm loving it. We're so very proud of you. And um, everybody uh, I'm sure watching will have seen the film the very inspiring film with you guys uh, coaching up and mentoring Eva and Davis. Uh, they got a lot of good, good gems from you guys. And I'm sure all the other kids did as well. Um, I do want to say a little bit about, well, I, you know what? I would like for you, Janicia, to talk a little bit about who you are, what got you involved in uh, coaching, first of all, sports and, and coaching with up to us sports. Yeah, so I, I've played sports pretty much my entire life, and I've been involved in sports um, since I was about eight years old. Um, and so recently I had started volunteering slash coaching with a, a nonprofit called the 18th Ward. Um, and an up to us sports position became available. Um, and so I knew a little bit about up to us sports because in my, in my job, um, we did a workshop, we did a workshop with them. And so I had been interested ever since in their training. Um, and so when the position became available, I was already working with one group of kids with the 18th board. Um, this presented the opportunity for me to work with another group of kids in a community where I grew up, um, as well as I, I got to go through the entire uh, training, all the training sessions that Up To Us Sports offers. And so, um, that's what got me into it. That's what got me involved. And it's been great ever since. All of the training I use day to day now at this point, in addition to a lot of what I've learned um, through just coaching with the 18th Ward. And so um, it's been great. It's been a great experience overall. And that's what got me involved. I, I, I love that. I'm glad you mentioned about Up to Us Sports training because I was coaching well before I knew Up to Us Sports. I happened to go to Up to Us Sports training I believe it was in, in Philadelphia. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to be a better coach now because of this training. And I already thought I was great, right? But you, you can never learn too much, right? Leo, what about you? Yeah, so I was a little the opposite. I didn't start sports till about seventh grade. I was a skateboarding kid. Yeah. And uh, my, my youth was a little bit more trouble just being around the skateboard. But that's when I found wrestling. And I wrestled ever ever since seventh grade and I was good enough that it got me into college. And uh, I walked on at a university, uh, George Mason University outside of DC. Yeah. And I ended up getting a full ride my sophomore year just yeah. through wrestling. But throughout that whole process, I was giving back and, and coaching the younger kids. And when I stopped wrestling, I needed something else to fuel my fire. So right. coaching obviously was the next step in that piece. And that's when I was fortunate enough to find up to a sports and then be able to do that in the area right, right outside of DC. Nice. And, and, and that's just, that's exactly it. It's so important for these coaches, uh, for us to be able to engage in line with the kids, for the us to feel us and feel our passion, right? So I, I know, Leo, you said um, something about it being important for the kids to see someone that looks like them in these roles. So talk to me a little bit about that. 100%. Um, you know, I think even with my my profession I'm pursuing is it's to be a teacher. And a big reason why I chose that is growing up, I didn't have a lot of teachers that looked my same skin complexion. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel that, you know, what if my skin color, you know, didn't get me, you know, I needed, I needed to do something to put myself in a position to, to have my younger kids see the same skin complexion, see, see that person there. And that's something I didn't see a lot in the sport of wrestling, but fortunately enough in the area of where I'm at right now in Fairfax, right outside of DC, I get a lot of the same kids who are looking like me. And that's because of the pocket of diversity I'm in and a lot of first generation Americans, just like myself. So being able to be an accomplished student athlete, an accomplished adult, letting them see yeah. that example, that role model, lets them think that's achievable and attainable as well. 
So I think it's very important. It, it is very important and admirable. Thank you for doing that. I, you know, I do want to say, Janicia, so listen, this is just your first year coaching with Up To Us Sports. And out the gate, <laughs> you're coach of the year, baby. That's, that's a big deal. So I was, I was reading up a little bit on you. So I'm, I'm loving everything about you. I understand that you're a Kip East primary in New Orleans, Louisiana. You yes. played basketball overseas, Portugal and Switzerland for two years prior to you, <laughs> prior to you um, service, your service after a standout career at Loyola. You go, girl. <laughs> Thank you. We get top notch over here. Thank I'm you. loving this. Kudos to you on that. Okay. How much did you? How much did basketball and sports enhance your life? Not only as a young person playing it, but as an adult. A lot. I mean, I I had so many opportunities because of basketball. So I played. So I'm from New Orleans, um, born and raised, and I ended up staying. Gumbo. Here. Exactly. <laughs> I ended up staying here um, for college, and Loyola, New Orleans, is an NAIA school. And so I had one teammate who I saw play overseas. She played overseas for one season. So I was like, wow, this is kind of going back to Leo's point. I saw someone do it. So I was like, this is attainable. And at this point, like I was a senior in college, and I was like, you know, at this point, I'm on I'm at or higher than her level. So I probably could get overseas. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I was, a, I'm still a young adult, of course, but like right out of college, I had this idea in my head. I was like, all right, I want to play basketball overseas, but I know I'm attending an NAIA school. So I know it, it's going to be difficult and do all of these things and, and just be difficult, honestly, to get a contract playing professionally. And so, you know, just relating that back to, to my life. I was super, super consistent during that time, uh -huh. consistent and persistent. So I reached out to coaches directly. I literally DM'd as many coaches as I could find. I, I kid you not, I DM'd all of the coaches find on yourbasket.com. And I had one coach who was interested. So that's how I ended up getting the experience in Portugal. And that just led to my next experience. But I mean, that alone shaped yeah who I am right now just right. because I have learned like if you if you want to do something you just have to you have to do it and you have to do it consistently and like believe that you can do this thing and right. so I think I've been able to take that and you know I also right now I work for the Saints and the Pelicans so like me trying to get into that position it was a ton of me reaching out to people like hey I'm interested in this this is my experience and so I think that just that experience as a whole has kind of shaped um, or helped to shape, you know, who I am right now and even what I bring to, or what I try to bring to the kids. What you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what you do bring, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you do bring to these children. And, yeah. and what you're saying about being persistent and consistent, you got to kick doors in. You have to, you have to stay on top of that. And so you being the person that you are, that falls over into the children, into the kids, right? So all the work that, that, that you've been doing for yourself, it's being seen. And, and, and our children, especially in the neighborhoods in which we grew up in, right? They need to see people like Janicia and Leo. And so I'm so happy that you guys are seen, you are up to us sports coaches and your coach of the year. Leo, talk to me a little bit about where you're coaching right now. Is it the same community in which you grew up in? Yeah, so I'm actually about an hour 15 away from where I'm coaching right now, but I grew up in Winchester, Virginia. And that's uh, a little bit right off 81 towards the mountains of West Virginia, but it's primarily in Western Virginia. And the demographics are a lot different from where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think back home, I'm closer to the mountains, so... It's not as diverse as it is here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Crazy how coaching over here, over the mountain, I'm a lot, I'm closer to a lot more people who, who look like me and who come from my background. Um, but that age of group, the pocket is a lot of first generation Americans. And that's a lot of what I did not have back home. Um, you know, I felt like I was kind of an outcast in a way. Mm. Not as many first generation Americans were back home where I lived towards the mountains, but here, 
they're everywhere. Um, you know, right out being right outside of DC in the Fairfax area, it's it's definitely a melting pot. Yeah. Uh, even the high school I coach at, it's probably predominantly like 25% Hispanic, 20% Asian Americans, oh. and it's scattered all across the board. But it, it definitely has a huge impact in the way I can relate to the context of where my kids are from and be able to build that relationship, not just with my kids, but with the parents. And that right. gives parents a lot of trust in me. And that that just helps build that relationship with the kids to just be completely bought in. Right so. on. That's a very good point. So when the when when children understand or know that their parents trust their coaches, mm. that's a that's a bond. You're creating a, a, an indirect bond with that as well. So we're growing trust all the way around. So that's that's beautiful. I do want to speak about. I, I heard about uh, Eva's mom's note, and um, could you could you tell? Um, could maybe could you talk about that note a little bit? Because I mean that that really got me. Yeah, and I, it, it got me too. Um, so she she reached out to the directors of our program, just expressing her overall great uh, gratefulness towards us for um, for having this after school sports program. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in the midst of that conversation, she was like, you know, you all really may have saved my daughter's life. Wow. And me hearing that, I was like, wow, like this is. We, we play every day. Like essentially when we get down to it, we're playing every day. And to think that that could have that kind of impact that she's seeing at home in her daughter, I just, that blew my mind. And I was, <laughs> I was super grateful to hear that because I was like, wow, we really, I, we play every day. That is what we do. Like what, the purpose of all of this, yes, we want them to grow in the sports and, and we get to see that, which I love, but we want them to have fun. And so, you know, just to know that, like I said, like just to know that that made that type of impact was was amazing. Yeah, I'm sure. But you know that that playing is so much more than playing, which you know. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting how you can have so much fun, but you're actually making a positive impact. Mm -hmm. You know, these kids. If these children were not with you, up to us sports programs, these kids would be out in the streets somewhere doing things they probably shouldn't be doing, or around people that they shouldn't trust. So it, it is a lot more than playing, but I, I understand what you're talking about. Leo, talk to me about the impact that you believe you and Davis have with each other with, with essentially playing. <laughs> right. I mean, our sport is wrestling, so we're literally like, yeah, really consider playing, but we're rough like, housing. Right. Like rough housing. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I, I think our bond is really strong because we're, we're connected and bonded by the same struggles. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately, his older brothers went through, you know, a, a kind of a troubled childhood, you know, in and out of the system. And, and there's a lot of ways where Davis, little, little Davis could have gone. And I grew up in that same kind of household. You know, my older brother, unfortunately, wasn't the best role model, but it, it got me in a lot of things. But fortunately, I was able to see my way out of it. So we were, we off the bat, we talked a lot about that. And, you know, we were really bonded by those struggles, which just opened the doors to have an open, honest relationship. Mm -hmm. and getting him to come out for the sport of wrestling, you know, it was, it was tough in itself because as being first generation Hispanic uh, Americans, you know, our parents are very, they, they have a lot of doors that are, that are up. They don't want a lot of, let, they don't want to let a lot of outside people in. Um, so it took a couple of house visits to come and visit Davis and to convince his mom and his dad that, you know, wrestling and, and sports are, are a good vehicle to kind of get your kid to go somewhere else in life that you wouldn't see it in the moment. And I think through the, through the battle, through being battle tested in wrestling and having to physically, you know, impose your will on someone else and go through the hard practices, it, it allows for a lot of vulnerable moments to really impact and touch kids and just see the light at the end of the tunnel for whatever. whatever. I love that. I love that you said house visits. So you see what I'm talking about here? Do you see what I'm saying? We go above and beyond for our kids. This is something that I wish all children had. I wish all children had programs like up to us sports in their community and coaches like the both of you, Janice and Leo. Um, this, is, this has been very special. Where do you guys see yourself in a couple of years? Because I mean, you're successful now. You've had a successful past. Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? 
Janicia? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, so the 18th Ward, the program that I work with is a relatively new program. And so I would love for us to be able to expand um, to multiple schools mm -hmm. here in New Orleans um, for like the elementary and middle school age. Sports are typically only offered once you get to like the, the fifth grade or so. Mm -hmm. so it, you know, I would have loved to have the opportunity to play or to start in sports, start in organized sports a bit earlier. Yeah. And so I'm, my, my hope is that we can expand our program so that we can offer this to more students and to more schools. Um, but yeah, definitely somewhere in the, the youth sports realm, um, hopefully in a school as well. Nice. I love it. And, and I relate. I didn't start playing football until I was 42 years old, organized at least. So I was a kid that I wish I would have had sports growing up. It was the sport I wanted to play was football. That wasn't there for girls. So I get it. I, we want more kids to be involved now playing sports. Um, Leo? Um, so I'm currently wrapping up my master's here at George Mason University for secondary education. So uh, <laughs> nice. and um, hopefully I'll be in the building by 2022. But I, I look forward to hopefully being a head coach here soon at the school I'm currently at now. And um, I've also implemented elementary school wrestling and middle school wrestling. So this morning I was actually at a the eighth graders are going up to Fairfax High School, and I was at this event that you get to kind of have the kids pick and choose which activities they can do when they go to high school. So I brought a bunch of trophies, a bunch of shirts, and had a bunch of kids out there just giving out posters, signing in on a spreadsheet, and just right on. names and emails. So hopefully to build a feeder program from elementary, middle school, get those kids into Nova Wrestling Club, and then get them on the Fairfax High School wrestling team, so. Look, look, look at you, feeder program, okay. One begets another and another begets another, so right on point. I do wanna say two more things. Hold up those awards again, one more time. Let me see those. And I want you to keep them there. They're very special. I'm very proud of you. Up to us sports coaches is something that not everyone can do. It takes a special person with a special heart and special love in them. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your selflessness and congratulations on the Coach of the Year Award. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.